Have you ever heard about the 1962 movie Lolita? Get ready for an interesting journey filled with funny, shocking, and meaningful facts about this classic film. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, Lolita tells the story of a middle-aged man who becomes infatuated with his teenage stepdaughter, leading to a tumultuous and taboo relationship. Despite the controversial subject matter, the film received critical acclaim for its bold storytelling and standout performances. But did you know that Kubrick faced numerous challenges during production, including censorship issues and casting controversies? Keep watching to uncover lesser-known facts and anecdotes that will captivate you. Now we want to hear from you. What's your most special memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. The 1962 movie Lolita caused quite a stir when it hit the screens. Adapted from Vladimir Nabokov's controversial novel, it delves into the taboo topic of a middle-aged man's infatuation with a young girl. Despite the controversy, or perhaps because of it, the film made waves in the cinematic world. It challenged societal norms and sparked discussions about censorship, morality, and the limits of artistic expression. The movie's influence was significant, leaving a lasting impression on cinema history. It paved the way for more daring and provocative storytelling, pushing boundaries and forcing audiences to confront uncomfortable truths. Its lasting impact is one of both admiration and criticism, with scholars and filmmakers still analyzing its themes and techniques today. The film remains relevant because its themes remain pertinent in contemporary society. Issues surrounding power dynamics, consent, and the objectification of women continue to be hot topics. It serves as a cautionary tale, reminding audiences of the dangers of obsession and exploitation. Despite its age, the movie remains powerful and thought-provoking. Its influence can be seen in countless works of art that have followed its lead, exploring similar themes with varying degrees of subtlety. Whether viewed as a masterpiece or a controversial relic of its time, the film continues to spark dialogue and challenge perceptions, ensuring its place in cinematic history. Considered for the role of Humbert were Marlon Brando, Rex Harrison, and Peter Ustinov. He knew how important the character was, and each actor brought their own style. But it was Peter Sellers who got Stanley Kubrick's attention. Sellers interested him because he based Clara Quilty's voice on Kubrick himself. It was strange, but funny to see yourself in someone else's acting. Stanley Kubrick picked Sellers after seeing him in The Battle of the Sexes and hearing his comedy album The Best of Sellers. Kubrick liked how Sellers portrayed Quilty, and it reminded him of himself. There was something about Sellers' Quilty that Kubrick really liked. So, when they started filming, it was Sellers who played Quilty, giving him depth and mystery. Every smile, every joke reminded Kubrick of himself, showing how closely they worked together. In the end, Stanley Kubrick and Peter Sellers made Quilty into a character that was both fascinating and unforgettable, leaving a strong impression on movie history. In crafting the screenplay for the film, Stanley Kubrick diverged significantly from the original work, making notable editorial decisions such as eliminating certain scenes and altering character dynamics. Despite having the sole credit as a screenwriter for Lolita, Kubrick was one of the first directors to officially take credit for his writing in a film, a departure from the traditional practices of the industry. This move was influenced by his substantial revisions to Vladimir Nabokov's screenplay and his own contributions to the dialogue, along with the improvisations of Peter Sellers. From Dr. Strange Love onward, Kubrick consistently claimed credit as a screenwriter, reflecting the growing prominence of the director as the primary author of a film, as advocated by the auteur theory. Kubrick was known for his meticulous approach to dialogue, usually insisting on adhering closely to the script without allowing improvisation from actors. However, he made exceptions for Peter Sellers and later R. Lee Ermey, recognizing their talent and allowing them creative freedom with their lines. This departure from his usual practice highlights the exceptional abilities of these actors and their collaborative relationship with Kubrick. During the filming of Spartacus in Spain, Kubrick began preparations for Lolita, a project he undertook while frustrated with being confined to a strict screenplay as a director for hire. Despite the constraints he faced on Spartacus, Kubrick utilized his time to develop the adaptation of the supposedly unfilmable novel, laying the groundwork for the controversial and critically acclaimed film that followed. During the making of the film, the actress Sue Lyon, who portrayed the titular character, was just 14 years old, while in the original novel, Lolita is depicted as being 12 and a half years old. Interestingly, the movie marked the final appearance of Anne Flack. The screenplay for the film, written by Vladimir Nabokov, took significant departures from the novel. 
Stanley Kubrick, the director, only utilized a portion of Nabokov's screenplay, leading to the latter's disappointment. Nabokov's unused screenplay even included a cameo for himself, likened to Alfred Hitchcock as that nut with a butterfly net, a nod to his hobby of lepidoptery. Despite his mixed feelings about the adaptation, Nabokov's unused screenplay was later published as Lolita, a screenplay. Stanley Kubrick changed the time period of Vladimir Nabokov's book Lolita to make it more current in the movie. He worked closely with Peter Sellers, who played Quilty, allowing Sellers to improvise and wear different disguises. This made Quilty more interesting as he followed Humbert and the young woman, adding more layers to the story's tension and complexity. Originally, Kubrick wanted Bernard Herrmann to compose the movie's music. However, Herrmann didn't want to include Bob Harris' theme from Lolita in his music. Even though this didn't work out, the film's music still played a big part in creating its overall mood and feel, making it a unique movie experience. To sum up, Stanley Kubrick's changes to Nabokov's story, along with his collaboration with Peter Sellers and the music direction, helped make the movie special and important. In Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of a controversial novel, Shelley Winters, while campaigning for future President John F. Kennedy, sought Vladimir Nabokov's approval for her role by reading his book. To avoid political controversy, Kennedy suggested she conceal the novel's cover. Kubrick, known for independently producing his films, including this one, opted to shoot Lolita in England. During a drive-in scene, the characters enjoy the curse of Frankenstein, with Kubrick enhancing the experience by adding a scarier soundtrack. This movie is considered a classic in cinema history and is highly recommended for anyone who loves movies. It was directed by Stanley Kubrick, who is known for making great films. Despite being controversial, the movie is well regarded for its storytelling. Sue Lyon, who played the main character, couldn't go to the New York premiere because she was too young. But she got to go to the London premiere at the Columbia Theatre in September. This film talks about things that are usually not talked about and is really well made. It's one of those movies that people should watch at least once in their lives. Its inclusion in Schneider's list shows how important it is to film culture and how it continues to be influential. During the filming of the movie, Sue Lyon had to miss four days due to tonsillitis, which landed her in the hospital. Another teen actress, Jenny Maxwell, was considered for the title role. Originally, Stanley Kubrick had his sights set on Joey Heatherton for the lead, but her father, Ray Heatherton, declined the offer, concerned that his daughter would be pigeonholed into a specific type of role. Instead, Sue Lyon was ultimately cast in the role. These behind-the-scenes happenings shed light on the challenges and decisions involved in bringing the story to the screen.